Okay, I'm getting ready for my morning shoot. I'm going to be making some cabbage rolls today. Another cooking video. And I do believe I need a little morning coffee. Time to get at it. Ladies and gentlemen, look at these gorgeous cabbage rolls. I'm going to give you a stellar recipe and resolve a few issues on how to make a really good cabbage roll. Good morning. Today I'm going to be making some cabbage rolls. I need to get started the right way. Have a little coffee. I've got these beautiful ingredients out here. I want to explain my motives and my thoughts and what's going on in this video. Um, there was a, a gentleman that's uh, one of my viewers, Gary Jones, um, that left a comment, a request, that I help him with his cabbage rolls. He's having a hard time with getting the, um, the cabbage itself tender enough. So today I want to teach you the tricks of making sure your cabbage is tender enough. But here's the thing. There's certain recipes I never focus on because, frankly, I think they're a bit boring. And cabbage rolls, pretty close to the top of that list. But I see this sort of the same way I saw meatloaf. It needed to be fixed. This recipe needed to be fixed. Come on, hamburger, meat, and rice packed inside of cabbage and cooked up. That's about as flavorless and boring as it gets. So I decided to take this recipe and completely rebuild it from the ground up. The only thing I kept in this recipe was the cabbage. Everything else, brand new recipe. I didn't look to anybody else or any other styles of cabbage rolls. I wanted this to be kind of from me. When I was first designing this, I thought, <clears throat> I thought I'm gonna use certain groups of ingredients and the more I processed this, the more I decided I want to take this from being Southwestern fare and push it more to being regular good old fashioned American cooking. All right, so this is going to be a little more simplistic dish. Originally, I was going to use black beans. We're not going to do that. We're going to use potatoes. And I've got some other wonderful stuff out here. This isn't your boring recipe of hamburger meat and rice. This one is delicious. So much so that those that I had do my uh, test tasting were clamoring for more. And they asked me to please, when you make this recipe, please um, bring us what you don't eat. Bring us the extra. They wanted more and they wanted a lot more. Uh, and that was really neat to see because, you know, the reaction of people when they first try something kind of gives it away. And then I asked, you know, what do I need to change? What do I need, flavors do I need to bump or work or whatever? And they're like, no, no, just leave it alone. It's right on. And uh, so this recipe I'm going to show you, it's delicious. The flavors, they pop. And for once, you're going to have a cabbage roll that's exciting and people are going to want to go back for seconds. So let me show you the way I do it. This is cabbage rolls my way. It's going to be good. <laughs> Down here, we have some fantastic ingredients for our cabbage rolls. The star of our dish over here is going to be this beautiful pork tenderloin. Now, I'm using pork on this particular cabbage roll recipe. If you don't like pork or you don't do pork, you can do beef. You could do a beef tenderloin. You're looking for about a pound and a half of it, or you can use um, a nice steak, but go with something super tender. Also, you can use a spiced beef sausage for this instead of the pork chorizo. Now back here I have one medium cabbage head. Really this recipe I would say go with a large one. Also you're going to be using some potato, tomato, and some chopped green onions. In addition I've got black pepper, oregano, onion, 
and some salt that we're going to be putting in this dish. So we have a whole exciting array of beautiful ingredients ready to get cooked up. When you have a cut of meat that's very delicate and tender, I recommend that you partially freeze your meat. Don't freeze it all the way. It still needs to have a little movement to it, but it'll firm it up when you partially freeze it and make it a lot easier for you to make very good clean cuts on it. Okay, so that's what I have done here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole thing, let me stack these up. I'm going to make dice. Now this tenderloin is so tender, it's very difficult to cut. This is the reason I recommend that you go ahead and partially freeze it because it makes making dice so much easier. So small dice, one quarter to three eighths of an inch square if you can get that out of it, okay? Now folks, as with everything I teach on Texas Cooking Today, it's all about the setup method. I've gone ahead and halved my tomatoes washed out the seeds. I've removed any rough parts on my onions and cleaned them, removed the roots, and peeled my potato. I just have to dice all of this out. Um, so you'll know, when you're gonna dice tomatoes, do yourself a favor and just cut that sucker from the inside out. Your knife will cut through the skin so much easier if you do it this way, all right? And now all we're gonna do, turn this sideways, I'm going to make some beautiful little dice with these, the same way we did with our meat. There we are. Do all of your tomato the exact same way. Now when you're doing setup method, use bowls and get everything cut up and put in those bowls and that way you can measure everything you know exactly what you have going on when you're working a potato they roll around a lot so you do yourself a favor make it safer and give yourself a flat spot on that potato make that cross cut about the same thickness you want your dice to be that way that piece can be turned into dice as well now we have a potato that's flat all i have to do is cut some slices in the width that i'm looking for and then once I have the whole thing cut up that way, I can make my dice. And there we go. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Nice, smooth, even dice. And those are gonna cook up even. You don't want your potato dice to be too large because your potato is going to be the one thing that takes the longest to cook in this recipe. Same with all of our other ingredients. We want to go ahead and get it put in a prep bowl. Now I'm doing all of this, but I'm just kind of giving you all an idea of what you're looking for when prepping out your items. And the same way on these, we're just looking to make nice, even cross cuts. Nothing special. right and I'm going to do all of that green onion the same way these things like to roll around on you they can get away okay do all of your vegetables the same way well folks all of our prep work is done the ingredients are all measured out and put in bowls ready to go what we have to do now is to focus on that guy right there, our cabbage. Our cabbage needs to be made tender. In this recipe, if you want your cabbage to be properly tenderized, you have to par cook it. That's the reason we haven't done anything with it yet. I need to take this, put it in a pot, and I'll show you what I do with it. I have my cabbage all ready to go down in this pot. Put an inch of water in your pot, then get your cabbage down in there and boil it for 20 minutes. Bring the pot to a boil before you put your cabbage in there though, okay? Now folks, as I'm waiting for my water to come to a boil on this front burner right here, I wanted to show you different items to cook this up in. After we make our cabbage rolls, we then have to cook them down. And I want to do that in the oven. 
Now here is a simple oblong pan that works great. That's what I'm going to use this time. The last time I did this, which was the first time I created the recipe, I cooked them in this, but I had to double stack them so that I had some on top, some on bottom. Some were cooking in liquid, others were cooking above that which was cooking in liquid. So, and the thing of it is, is the cabbage rolls themselves give off their own, their, their own juice, okay, their own liquid, and they're going to be delicious, but I want all of them down in it. So this time I'm going to use a little shorter dish that's larger, and that way I can get the results I'm looking for. Now I need something that I can cover or that has a cover. This doesn't have a cover, so I'll be using foil on it. As we wait for the cabbage to cook, I'm going to go ahead and combine my other ingredients here. First thing I need to do is to work the chorizo through my pork well. And this is just basically combining ingredients. The beautiful thing about the chorizo, number one, it has spices in it, flavors, but it also brings fat to this dish. It, this dish seriously needs the appropriate amount of fat. So you can see how the chorizo kind of clumps up in single spots, and you have to really kind of force it to spread itself out, okay? The first time I did this, I did it with a fork, and I didn't find that, frankly, any easier <laughs> than I'm finding using the spatula, which I decided to try this time. Okay, so we're getting kind of an even spread of that fatty sausage. Isn't that beautiful? And I'll tell you what, the smell I'm getting from this right now is just fantastic. Let's do ourselves a favor and go ahead and work the spices through this. I'm going to sprinkle them all in. There we go. And last of all, our oregano. And get that all mixed well. The same way I did with the chorizo, I want to make sure that is truly spread throughout. You don't want somebody biting down into a big clump of black pepper all in one spot. That would be very unappealing. So it's all about quality of the mix. One at a time, you can work your other ingredients right down in here. And I guess you don't have to do them one at a time. You could do them all together. But I think fighting that many loose ingredients will make this job a little harder. I compound things, huh? Now the tomato, ladies and gentlemen, is so very important to this dish. If you have uh, any kind of allergies to tomato or anything, my apologies. Um, but you need something acidic. So let's say you're one of those folks that can't have tomato, and that subject was brought up to me recently, it's the reason I'm bringing it up. Um, you want to find something else that is somewhat acidic that you can put down in this. So find another fruit or something like that that isn't too sweet, that has good acid to it, and you can put it in here. Or you can just simply add in a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice, and not much. It'll only take, oh, just a tiny amount, a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half either. The tomatoes release their citric acid and it brings other flavors to the surface on this dish. As you can see, we've got a beautiful mix coming together, huh? How's that for a unique filling for cabbage rolls? Now there it is. We have that finished up and ready to go right down into our cabbage rolls. Look at this, folks. This is absolutely, absolutely delicious looking, and we haven't even cooked it yet. Water is boiling, so the cabbage goes in. It's as simple as that. Cover it, give it 20 minutes. This has been 20 minutes in the cooking.
need to let that set and cool enough so I can handle it. This resting time is good because it allows some of the inner leaves that are not yet fully cooked out to start doing that. Now what we've done here is we've done par cooking. Ladies and gentlemen, par cooking means partially cooking. Okay, so we've partially cooked this head of cabbage. Now it's gonna be easier to work the leaves and later on when we cook the cabbage rolls, the cabbage won't seem underdone when it's cooked. It'll be fully cooked. As my cabbage is cooling and doing its thing, I'm just going to lightly coat the bottom of this pan with some olive oil. So what I'm doing here is just gonna give a little flavor. It's also gonna give a nice release. I don't have to worry about sticking or anything. The next thing I do after I make my rolls and put them in here, I'll drizzle that olive oil again. And that just kind of gives it a nice overall texture when it's all done. And you'll see what I mean when they come out of this pan. The subtleness and everything is just unbelievable. So we do this the right way and we get a very, very special cabbage roll. My cabbage is getting a little cooler. It's still hot, but it's cool enough that I can touch it without burning myself. Um, now what I want to do is take a paring knife and slice my leaves away from this core. So I'm just going to cut in a circle like this. But remember, never cut towards yourself. So we're going to make this cut and then turn it and make a little more cut, okay? So let's do it that right way there. That way we're always cutting away from ourselves. Remember, cabbages can be a bit firm. And you do this this way, what will happen is these leaves will simply fall away from the core. And it makes this a lot easier. One at a time, I can just take these and pull them back. We start with the last one, the outer one. Work my way in. I just made another circular pass around the core with my knife and I'm extracting that. So now the rest of my leaves are much easier to get to. However, the inner leaves are gonna fight you a bit more. They like to grab a hold of each other a lot more. So just gently work them apart. There we go. Get them rolled up nice and pretty. When I first made these, I knew I was on to a good recipe. You know, just all of the, the flavors were there to make for something special. And uh, so I, I expected something good, but not as good as it actually came out. These were really top notch. Well, a moment ago we lost power and I had power down, I would say for a good, oh, maybe 10 minutes. And I thought I wasn't going to be able to complete this shoot. And as I'm getting everything wound down and taken apart, suddenly the power comes back up. So before we lose it again, let's get this done. I want to drizzle this with a little olive oil, okay? There we go. Get a good coating over the top of them. I'm going to hit them with a little bit of salt, just lightly. It doesn't have to be extreme, okay? There it is. We have our cabbage rolls ready to hit the oven. Go ahead and make sure your oven is preheated 350 degrees, and you'll have a delicious treat very, very soon. I'm putting the foil over my dish. There we go, it's in the oven. That's 350 degrees. Give those about 50 minutes. Once they're done, we're gonna take them out, give them about a 10 minute rest, and then they're ready to serve. Folks, I'm looking forward to this. And once you've tasted them, you're gonna see a dish disappear real quick because everybody's gonna eat them that fast. The quantities of what I used on all of these fantastic ingredients, that is one and a half pounds of the pork tenderloin, nine ounces of spicy sausage. I used Mexican chorizo sausage. Good flavor and it works really good in this dish. Back here, 
I have a head of green cabbage. I recommend a large head, you're gonna get more leaves out of it. The medium head that I have here, I'm, I'm worried that it's not really quite what I need. But that's what I had. <laughs> so down here we got some potato and you're gonna need about a cup of diced potato for this. Also about three quarters of a cup to a cup of diced Roma tomato three quarters of a cup to one cup of chopped green onions, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of oregano, one half of a teaspoon of onion powder. On your salt, you're gonna add a half of a teaspoon to the mixture for the filling, and one more half of a teaspoon over the rolls after they've been rolled up and put in a dish. That's your recipe, folks. It's not hard, and it is Special. Now let's take a look at those gorgeous, gorgeous cabbage rolls. This has had some resting time, about 10 minutes. Ooh, it's still hot, still steam. There we go. Beautiful cabbage rolls, folks. Oh, the odor is absolutely fantastic. I'm so looking forward to enjoying these. Oh man, these are so good looking. Pull some from the very center here. Oh yeah. Give me one of those big ones. Okay, let's take a look inside of one of these guys. Oh yeah. Looky there, folks. Isn't that beautiful? That's what we're looking for right there. I've been enjoying this. Mm. Mm. One of my viewers wrote in and asked for this recipe. Gary Jones, there's your second shout out. That is going to be better than any other cabbage roll you'll ever eat. Guaranteed. Flat and delicious. These ingredients work together perfectly. There's a beautiful harmony. And when you try it, you're going to see what I mean. I'd like to say thanks for watching. Please check out the channel, subscribe, you know, all of that stuff. Click the like button if you enjoyed this. Also, if you have questions, comments, if you have a request, you've seen what happens. Drop it down there in the comments box. I'd love to hear from you, and many times I will reply. Folks, have a good day. Enjoy your cabbage rolls, and have a good one.